We are welcome back to the breakfast. Now, did you know that for every one dollar you get into the country, the Central Bank of Nigeria will give you five naira in return? Well, the Central Bank of Nigeria announced this new policy over the weekend, and it's called the Naira for Dollar Scheme. The scheme takes effect from today, Monday, March 8th, 2021, and ends on Saturday, May 8th, 2021. The CBN says the move is to sustain the increase in inflows of diaspora remittances into the country. And joining us to discuss this is the President, Capital Market Academics of Nigeria, Professor Uche Uwaleke. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning. My pleasure. All right. I, I want you to help us unbundle this new scheme by the Central Bank of Nigeria. What does this mean for people who are sending money into the country and for people who are, who are receiving them, especially in terms of eligibility? Because they, they, they mentioned that it's specifically money is received through um, registered international money transfer operators. Yes. Um, I, I think the policy is meant to make the uh, remittances cheaper, transfer of money cheaper on the part of um, the Nigerian living in diaspora. So it's now going to be cheaper for the Nigerian to remit money. And I think that's a, a great incentive. Now, on, on the part of the, the recipient, the recipient gets, gets additional five naira for every one dollar, you know, every one dollar cent. So I, I think it's one policy, uh, just as the CBN observed, it's one policy that has worked in uh, some other countries, especially in Southeast Asia. Uh, with respect to attracting more forex in, into the country and boosting supply. So this is why I think that this experiment, because that's what I call it, for the first two months is uh, necessary. Then after the two month period, if uh, the objective is met, which is principally to boost the supply of forex, to reduce the wide premium between the official rate and the rate you have in the black market, especially, uh, then I'm pretty sure it will be it will be extended. And um, it's also important to um, to ensure that money sent into the country comes through official means, comes through recognized means, uh, through the banking in, uh, sector, through the banking industry. And that's why the central bank is saying that if it is. Money sent to the international money transfer operators, that kind of remittance will enjoy the rebate. Again, it is to encourage remittances through uh, recognized channels um, so that people don't, um, uh, you know, go through the black market, if you like, uh, when they are also remitting money. Of course, that way, the central bank is in a position to um, know what is coming in. And uh, also in, in a stronger position to manage the external results. Oh the whole idea God. is to boost uh, foreign exchange. The whole idea is to help our external results, improve our balance of payment, and uh, more importantly, strengthen the value of the naira. Now, uh, as you know, in the past, the central bank has adopted um, a number of measures, a number of policies to boost uh, in external results. Or to manage the external reserves. Okay. okay. Uh, in the past, the concentration has been on the demand side, uh, trying to restrict access to forex. That was why, if you recall, some time ago, the central bank came up with the policy of um, 41 items that were placed on the, uh, the restricted list. The, the ones that were central bank said they couldn't access uh, the forex. Now, that's the demand side. But it has also become obvious that something has to be done about the supply side. Now, in spite of the increase in the oil price we are witnessing, right. and we have not seen significant accretion to its own reserves. Uh, Professor, Professor Waleke, hold on, please. Um, I, I think we'll go further into uh, the plan to increase and to encourage um, diaspora remittances into Nigeria, um, hopefully before we end this talk. But... I want you to share a little bit on um, the loss that the CBN may have been suffering or Nigeria may have been, you know, um, having to deal with, with regards um, illicit uh, money transfer operators. 
um, over over the over the, um, the last few years, do you think that we've you know lost a lot of money that has come into Nigeria through illicit um, um, pathways? Yes, I, I, I think so. Uh, when you say loss, it's loss in the sense that it has not come through the official sources. Um, the estimate maybe that last year, for example, about $21 billion you know, uh, from that remittance was received into the country. And um, Nigeria was struggling uh, globally behind countries like China, India, uh, including uh, Egypt. Now, the, the explanation is that with this new policy, that these remittances from the restaurants uh, are likely to um, increase substantially. In, in fact, some estimate that by 2020 should uh, reach uh, $34 billion. So I think channeling remittances to the international monetary operators. Uh, license approved by the Central Bank of Nigeria will go a long way in um, ensuring that what is coming in uh, is um, through official channel and what is coming in is also um, such that the Central Bank at least um, can monitor and control. As I mentioned earlier, on, on the whole idea is to ensure that um, the exchange rate is um, stabilized. And at the end of the day, the wide margin between the official and the private market rate is, um, is narrow. Why the central bank continues to gradually pursue the policy of exchange rate unification, because that's the only solution to the premium that we see, the only solution to round shipping and all the other um, issues negative issues associated with um, multiple exchange rates. Okay, Professor, I wanted to ask you about, you know, this issue in boosting diaspora remittances. Nigerians in the diaspora have complained that the process of sending money to Nigeria is very long and stressful and also complicated. And they say that the federal government giving a five naira incentive does not compensate for the difficult process of sending money home. So if the federal government or the Central Bank of Nigeria wants to improve, you know, first of all, we know that this long and difficult process, was, I mean, it wasn't this way before now. So if the federal government, uh, you know, is looking to have more diaspora remittances, you know, more inflow, should they not be considering to simplify the process of money transfer into Nigeria? You're very correct. That process, the discussion, I think, is on. The central bank governor said that the international money transfer operators are uh, in talks uh, with the banks in Nigeria to continue to simplify the process. Uh, there's no way that, there's no doubt at all, but further simplification of the process will encourage more remittances through official channels. But of course, you know why some of those procedures are put in place? They are put in place to ensure that the the whole process is really transparent. It has to be transparent, um, uh, you know, to the point that the whatever is being transferred does not constitute, Ill, you know, illegal or illicit illicit flow. That's why you you put procedures, you put processes to to ensure that the person that is spending is known, the person that is receiving is known. Uh, if you like know your, know your uh, KYC uh, requirement. But there's no doubt at all that simplifying the procedures will go a long way to encourage that. And I think the Naira for Dollar uh, policy is one measure, you know, aimed at uh, incentivizing these um, remittances so that the aspirant can be encouraged to use more of official channels um, than the, um, you know, other other channel. So I think it's, it's the first step, is the right step, is the step in the right direction. And um, why they talk for further simplif simplification. Uh, it, it help, help with, you know, clarifying where this five Naira comes from. Uh, can the CBN continue to keep that up? And is, is the CBN going to be running into any losses um, if they continue to pay five Naira for every dollar? Um, I, I can't imagine how much, you know, you know um, that would be, of course, having the CBN will have to let go of 
you know, just to encourage this process. So help us understand that. You know, do you think the CBN would suffer any losses financially? Um, um, or is there a way that this has been understood that the five naira can be given out without it, you know, meaning much to the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria? Yes, uh, there's no doubt uh, when you are paying additional five naira, remember the official exchange rate is uh, 379 naira to the dollar. And um, if you take on the FX rate, that's the RME window rate. Investors and exporters window rate, you have about, you have like 410, 412 naira. So if the central bank is offering five naira extra, it means that the central bank is going to bear the uh, that extra cost uh, that the bank, uh, you know, will be will be incurring. So, and, and that's why, in my view, the central bank is um, has said, okay, uh, let's let's see how it goes. So, if in the final analysis, you know, cost, cost benefit analysis, if if it is costing the central bank X, X amount, for example. Uh, to implement, and the diaspora inflows in, increase uh, to the point where Ni Nigeria is now getting Y amounts uh, increase in diaspora inflows, <coughs> and that that more than compensates for the cost. I think it is justified, and I think uh, if that happens, the central bank may consider extending the period, the trial period of two months. Okay. Um the issue here is improving, you know, forex, forex in Nigeria. Well, lots of other, you know, economists would argue that the federal government or the CBN is going about this the wrong way, and that if they truly want to improve forex in Nigeria, this is intertwined with tra with imports, and that the government needs what it needs to do is to improve, uh, you know, local industries, improve uh, local manufacturing and begin to concentrate more on exports to drive foreign exchange and not in short term, you know, quick fixes like five naira for a dollar. I don't know what, you, what, what where your stance is on that. Yes, you are very correct on the long term measures to address this issue. There's no doubt that um, both enough exports would uh, go a long way to um, boost supply, as you know. For a long time, we have depended uh, Prof Professor Waleke, we're, we're losing you there. Can you hear me? <laughs> Hello, no. Professor, can you hear me? Okay. All right. Seem to have lost him. Uh, we'll try and reconnect with uh, Professor Uche Waleke, President, Capital Market Academics of Nigeria. And of course, the question really is, what does the uh, Naira stand to gain from all of this you know and it's a, a two-month period you know really enough uh, to see any changes or to you know see you know some of the benefits of all of this you know what's really important is uh, giving the naira more strength uh, some people have argued and i hope that we have time to ask that you know that we maybe should just go ahead and float the naira um so that you know we can swallow that bitter pill and and you know see that it might be beneficial in the end um, you know, there would also, also always be people who don't agree with that, you know, and say, you know, you know it's best that we have a, a fixed um, exchange rate. So some of, these are some of the questions that need to be asked. Also, it's just a two-month trial period. Is that really enough? Um, how many people outside Nigeria are going to be, you know, in, you know, eager now to send money to Nigeria? Professor Waleke, welcome back. Yes, thank you very much. Yes. Yes. I was saying that the point you made is um, the permanent solution, the long-term solution, you know, to addressing um, external results and challenges, including balance of payments and issues. We need to boost exports, uh, no doubt. We can't continue to depend on oil for over 90% of um, the forex that, that, that we receive. Uh, but remember, this, this has been a legacy issue. It's something that has been there for a long time. And it is not some, it is not something that can come about overnight, and that is why the fix fixes are required. So we need to uh, implement these fix fixes at least to to, to push on the uh, negative impact it's having on the external results and the balance of payments by you know by extension. So the idea of diversification, diversifying the export base, remains the permanent solution to the issue of. Um, um, you know, external results. But remember too that the, the IMF has recommended 
And one of the ways to uh, reduce the white premium between the official and the black market rate is to unify exchange rate. Uh, instead of having multiple exchanges, to just have one single rate. One single rate will, will um, uh, you know, in the calculation of the IMF, uh, which also stands to reason, will discourage the demand, the huge demand for, for dollars. Because the challenge has always been the demand, you know, the, the pressure is on the demand side, okay? So how do you explain a situation where we import virtually, um, you know, everything that we use in Nigeria? So, and we spend a lot of money on the medical, medical tourism, uh, paying school fees uh, for people that are abroad, you know, on invisible items, again. So the, the solution is putting our house in order, uh, boosting export, and then, um, uh, aggressively embarking on the import substitution um, um, measures such that we produce what we eat and also get Nigerians to patronize uh, products that are made here. That is the way we can reduce the pressure permanently. permanently Professor Waleke. In, uh, on the forex market. Professor Waleke, um, you earlier mentioned, you know, that this very likely is, you know, in order to see how we can, in, in somehow, some way, strengthen the Naira. Um, so walk us through the actual possibility that this will work. It's just two months. Um, you know, of course, it's, it's likely that if this is seen as a success, you know, it would continue. So help us understand, help, help our viewers understand this morning, if, this, you, if you truly believe that this will work. And then second, if we have time, you can also quickly share with us on the idea of floating the Naira, if that's something that we should, you know, maybe consider. Okay, the, 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 first, the first thing is to note that um, the central bank acknowledged that in recent time, the weekly inflows you know, has increased from uh, $5 million to about $30 million uh, following the uh, central bank's policy of um, requiring the bank to pay dollars to uh, anybody who has been sent money. Unlike in the past when the dollars are converted to Naira, uh, you recall that there was a time the central bank said if you if you got money from abroad, you should receive the money in the same foreign currency in which the money was sent. Yes. So that that, that one has been um, uh, it's been implemented and it's been yielding results according to the central bank. So I also think this one will um, you know will achieve some results. Um, that's why you have a two month trial period uh, for the central bank to test. So I'm sure if the objective is met, the central bank may consider ex extending it. So it can work in other countries, as I said earlier on. Uh, that's why the central bank is also thinking that replicating the same policy here uh, could work for Nigeria. Now, on the issue of floating the Naira, floating the Naira means leaving the Naira to market forces, yeah. you know, letting demand and supply determine the value of the Naira. The challenge with float floating the Naira is what I mentioned earlier, the disproportionate demand for uh, the forex. So demand is so, so high. There were months when demand, for example, uh, would amount to $4 billion, and you have supply um, in the range of $800 million. So in that kind of situation, if you float the uh, the Naira, for example, uh, yes, exchange rates may, may go up, but if demand does not uh, reduce significantly, you may not have achieved your objective. So, floating the Naira is usually in situations where you have um, um, maybe you don't have a mismatch be you know, be between the demand and supply. So, I think it, again, it should be a long term plan of the central bank, but not an immediate one. Because if it is done now, of course, it is going to cause a lot of discussions in the economy. Um, the infl high inflation rates, you know, uh, and, and, and all of that. So what we need to do, I remember too, that there are sectors of this economy that get the dollar at preferential rates. Take the case of um, oil, for example. If you start, if you start importing oil today, it will be a long way to have the reserves. Mm -hmm. So because we import fuel, petroleum products, any time uh, uh, of oil is important. They, of course, they will require the last to import this oil. So, if you ask the, the importance of petroleum products to import at uh, 410 or, 4, or, 4, or 450, you can imagine what will happen to the pump price of oil. Right. 
So these so, are the issues. Uh, floating the mirror is a good one, but it's not something that will, is left for the country now. That's my submission. All, all right, Professor. Well, oh, see, I just wanted you to uh, share your thoughts on this issue for just 30 seconds before we wrap up. To do the math, if you get $100 in Nigeria, um, I think the federal government is, is giving you, or the CBN is giving you 500 naira. If you get $1,000, you're getting about 5,000 naira. Really, is this incentive enough? And how about fears that this might devalue the naira in, in 30 seconds, if you can, please? And now, that also means, that also means if, you, if you bring in $1 billion, you get 5 billion naira. Yes, so that, that, that's, the, that, that's also the implication. I'm so quickly respond yes, to that, quickly respond to that, Nigerians in the diaspora are asking, do, do, does the government want them to work 30-hour shifts? So it's 24 hours in a day, but <laughs> they're asking, what's the point? Is it, for, is it not for the government to develop the country because they're out there, you know, struggling, working two, two, hours, two shifts, three shifts in a day, and does the government want them to bring all that money and just send the money back home? So really, these are the fundamental issues I wanted you to address regarding how much of an incentive really is five naira to a dollar, you know, for Nigeria. Yes, it is. It, it, is a, it is an incentive. It's a certain point. It will make many, many diaspora's think home, think of, um, you know, bringing, bringing the dollars home. Yes, and of, you know, of course, many of them are in a position to do so. But I think this will like, incentivize them to, to do that. So if you go abroad, this kind of incentive should make you think of uh, remitting money to the people that you have left behind. All right. Uh, Professor Uche Uwaleke, President, Capital Market Academics of Nigeria. Thank you so much for your time and Thank for you. explaining you know, a little bit to us. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. All right. Yes, yeah, so we'll be talking uh, shortly about the Ogun State issue with uh, the refugee crisis. We'll be having a, uh, uh, you know, the Red Cross officer in Ogun State as well as other stakeholders to discuss this issue with us.